Splash, and I'm outside the Ice House, the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Davos, and I'm really pleased to be joined by Susan Goldberg, a favorite guest. Thank oh, you thank so you. much for coming along, editor thank of you. National Geographic. You have a fantastic issue this month on gender. You've put a transgender child on the front. We did. Tell me about some of the um, some of your the things that you're most excited about that you've learned from that issue. Well, we're very excited about the gender issue, and we have a transgender child on the front, but the issue is about gender in general. I mean, one of the things we learned is about how kids all over the world feel that gender affects their lives. Our, our photographer, Robin Hammond, uh, went to the homes of 80 children in eight countries and talked to them about what does it mean to be a boy in your culture? What does it mean to be a girl in your culture? What would it mean if you were somebody of the other gender? And we got amazing answers. I mean, they're funny sometimes, they're heartbreaking sometimes. But one of the big takeaways, unfortunately, is that girls all over the world, and not just in the developing world, but all over the world, still talk about their gender as limiting their opportunities. And so you've got nine-year-olds already mm -hmm. thinking about how gender limits them. And somehow, you know, in 2017, that should not be the case. No, it shouldn't. And, and from what I remember from last year, the conversation with um, Run Like a Girl yes. was around that teenage girls, actually, that was when they started feeling like they, they hadn't they didn't have what it took anymore. There was some issue because they were a girl, because they were female. But what you've found is that it actually starts even earlier. Well, it does. And, and I don't want to say that every single girl said this, but an awful lot of girls said it. And they said it in different languages. And we talked to kids from every socioeconomic group, you know, every kind of child. I mean, there was one little girl from Canada who said, everybody's equal now in the olden days and those were her words everybody right. wasn't equal but today right. everybody's equal but yet we talked to this other girl named Tommy Warbonnet who lives on the American Indian Reservation in South Dakota and she said the worst thing about being a girl is I can't do everything that boys can do and and gosh you just it just makes you mad and it, really it breaks your heart yeah, absolutely and the issue looked a lot at, at transgender. It did. And tell me about the survey of millennials that you did. So, um, uh, as part of our story um, about transgender, and we really looked at transgender through a scientific lens, as mm -hmm. National Geographic does, uh, there was we reported on a survey of a thousand millennials, um, and half of them said that they thought that gender was a spectrum, not mm -hmm. just a binary boy, girl, you know, mm -hmm. on either end, and that they knew people outside of those traditional gender roles. And I think this is so interesting because it tells us where the conversation about gender is going. Mm -hmm. I mean, all over the world, there is a big conversation going on around gender, and not everybody wants to acknowledge that conversation, mm -hmm. as I've seen in some of my feedback. Right. Um, but, you know, but I... But it's I, beyond bathrooms, right? Oh, it's way, <laughs> it's way beyond bathrooms. I mean, we're looking at you know, equality really, equality manners in, in workplaces and it just in, in how people can live their, live their lives. Because another one of the takeaways in the issue is the incredible ostracism faced by transgender people and, you know, how much more likely they are to be victims of violence uh, in the home, sexual violence, to drop out of school, higher suicide rates. And so there is, there is something important uh, going on here. And tell me about, in, in terms of some of the the issues that these people face. I, I was reading within the issue a lot of the stories of the kind of the younger folks who had actually undergone gender transformation. Now tell me how, how that made you feel. And I feel like it's the wrong question to be asking, you know, should we really be encouraging people? It feels like there is a spectrum and what's the right, what, what did you come away with as the right approach towards this? You know, I'm not a doctor, of but I, I, I think what we tried to do was describe and the families have to prescribe. Mm -hmm. I, it, what I what I learned was there are a lot of individual decisions being made. You know, one of the things that doctors said about dealing with children who say that they are a gender other than their birth assigned gender is that they are, if they are insistent, persistent, and consistent mm -hmm. in describing themselves as somebody of the other gender, mm -hmm. that that is the time when families really need to start paying attention. Um, but you know. We just we tried to present a whole array of new research on this, and people are dealing with it in a lot of different ways. The little the little girl on our cover, Avery mm -hmm. Jackson, for example, she's nine years old, and she has been living as a girl ever since she was four. She has said she has been a girl, and her family is raising her as a girl uh, since then. Um, she's a an activist in the transgender community. 
and um, we put her on the cover because not only was the portrait of her so powerful because of but what she said and she said the best thing about being a girl is now I don't have to pretend to be a boy and in that one Good very chills. profound yeah. sentence we thought that that put her right at the center of a lot of the conversation going on around gender and of course it's incredible timing because we've seen former Bradley Manning, Chelsea Manning, correct, pardoned right by now. President Obama, mm -hmm. and she has faced a horrific time in, a, in an all-male prison. You can argue about whether it's the right thing to do, but it's an incredible time to be putting this issue out at a moment when we don't have a female president going into the White House, where we don't have a, a female UN Secretary General where it felt like the gender conversation almost got somewhere in 2016, and it didn't. Well, um, I mean, that, that is true. And like I said, most of the issues actually devoted to looking at traditional gender roles. Mm -hmm. And in the immortal words of one of the nine-year-olds we talked to, she said, you know, one of the things, she said, it kind of bothers me how we have not had one girl president. Now, this right. child said this six right. or eight months ago, right. you know, long before the election right. results, but I just think it goes to show you that kids are really aware mm -hmm. of everything that's going on um, around gender. Thank you so much, Susan, for stopping oh, Edie, by. Thank you so much for having me. The Hub Culture Pavilion. I'm Edie Nash.